So just as I did in Excel 2010 and 2011 for the Mac and PC, I'm now going to show you how to make a standard curve using numbers for iWork 2009 and also how to use that standard curve to determine the concentration of an unknown sample if we're able to obtain that unknown's absorbance. So I've got my tube numbers already set up in a column, I've got my concentrations that I'll derive from my serial dilution in a column, and then the relative absorbances um, that will come from those concentrations. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to um, set up a graph based off of these particular cells because this is where I'm going to get my data for the standard curve. So I'm going to select those cells, I'm going to come over here to charts, and I'm going to select the scatter plot. Now, that's going to give me the scatter plot in the following manner, but there's a lot I need to actually change. So the first thing I'm going to change with this chart is I'm going to change the title. Concentration versus absorbance. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is I don't have a y-axis shown right now, but I have grid lines. So I'm going to come over here to axis for this chart. And I'm going to go to value axis Y in the inspector and I'm going to click on the first option which is show axis. I have brought on my Y axis now and now I need to remove those grid lines. So I'll again go to value axis Y. I'll click here and I'll go down to the bottom where it says show major grid lines and I will remove those grid lines. So now I've got a clean looking graph but there's still more that's missing. First and foremost I don't have titles on my X or Y axis. So I'm going, to again come, I'm going to again come to value axis Y, choose axis options, show title. And then I just need to put in my title here. Absorbance. Okay, And I'm going to come over here to inspector and I'm going to do the exact same thing for the X axis. So value axis X, show title. And this is going to be concentration in milligrams per milliliter. Okay. And then the final thing is right here it's given me a series legend. I'm just going to delete that because I don't need it. Now my series is basically designed for this particular chart off of these values here. So that means anything I plug into these values is going to populate this graph as a scatter plot. But there's one thing I want to ensure. First off, I want to make sure that my x and y axis never go below zero because absorbance can't drop below zero and neither can concentration. So I'm going to come over again to axis and on my y axis for the minimum value I'm going to put in zero. And for the x axis I'll do the same, zero. And I'm actually going to make it to where both of these axes have a maximum number of five steps going from zero up to whatever number it is. And the same here five steps. Okay, so the general setup of my graph is ready. Now we need to make sure that the values that are going to populate it are going to be correct. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to generate a serial dilution, a hypothetical one, and I'm going to give it absorbance values based off of that. Okay, so I've got my hypothetical serial dilution with its varying concentrations and then the absorbance values based off of that. Now, I am not the biggest fan of these particular points for the series, so I'm going to actually come over here to the inspector after selecting the chart, and I'm going to click on series, and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to choose the circle for the data symbols, and I'm actually going to shrink those circles in their size. There we go. Okay, so now there are more points. Now I want to add a trend line. If your inspector doesn't show it, under series, click on advanced, and it's going to give you the option to add in a trend line. And you'll just click on trend line, then click here where it says none, and choose linear. And that gives you a trend line. Now I don't want my trend line to be the same color as my data points, so I'm going to select the trend line by clicking on it. Okay, my trend line is selected and I'm going to come up here to the top and I'm going to choose a nice red color for it. 
Okay, so I've got my trend line, and now if I delete the values from here, that should remove my data points and my trend line. But anytime I put them in, it will automatically populate it with this. So if I type in different values, 20, 10, 5, 2.5, and 1.25, and then I give corresponding absorbances. Let's do 0.8, 7, 7. And there's my trend line and my data points. But again, the overall goal of this was to make it to where we could take an unknown absorbance and then generate a concentration based on this data. So here's where I would put my unknown absorbance, let's say it's 0.5, and here is where I would calculate my unknown concentration. So to do that, we're going to need to use a special function that's called forecast. Now on Excel, this was called trend, but here it's called forecast but it works the same way. Basically what you're going to do when you input forecast is you're going to put in the values that you have measured There we go. Okay, So all I did was I first input the value that I was interested in looking at, which is the unknown absorbance. And then I put in my x values followed by my y values. And I closed the parentheses. Now the reason why it gave me that error initially is because it automatically closed the parentheses for me and I closed them a second time. So it's forecast, the value you're interested in looking at, followed by the x values, followed by the y values, and then close your parentheses. Okay, now I'm going to clean this up a little bit. Um, I'm going to decrease the number of decimal places. Slowly. Of course, my computer keeps trying to auto-save this because I'm running line. And I'm going to give it two decimal places. And there. Okay, so now if I change this to anything, let's say I do uh, 0 0.18, it gives me a value between 2.5 and 5. If this were 0 0.05, it gives me a value that is uh, a little below 1.25, and that's typically because. Um, it's going to be based off of the line of best fit, not necessarily um, these values here. Okay. But you can see that this accomplishes the exact same thing. Now the problem with forecast is that even if you don't have a value inputted for this first one here, it won't give you an error. It will actually output a particular value. So what I'm going to do here is type a very simple if statement, and that is if B8 is blank. So is blank says what to do if this particular cell is blank and we don't have any value there. I'm going to return an empty pair of quotations. And that's basically going to say that if this cell is blank, show nothing for the concentration. And then I just need to close that out at the end of my formula. Okay. So now if I delete all of these values here, and I delete this value, it gives me nothing there. If I have information in here for these values, and let's 
do 0.28, 0 0.11, and 0 0.04. Okay. Notice it displays nothing there, but then if I type in something like 0 0.2, then it now populates it. Okay, So that's all there really is to it, and that's how you do it in numbers in a similar fashion to what you did in Excel.